Hey, Kathy Dam here. I wanted to let you see what I look like and give you a tour of our course so you can see how it's going to run. Um, normally I do this with a fancy background and look all professional and I decided, you know what, let's be a little real. This is how I'm going to look this semester. I'm fully online this semester, so I'll be sitting at my dining room table uh, during my office hours and chit chatting with you. So sometimes it can be helpful to kind of imagine what I look like. So when you hear my voice and all these videos I'm going to give to you for our class, you can kind of put a, a face to that voice. Um, our class is completely run online um, through video, so there's not going to be a synchronous Zoom session where we all meet each other. However, I really hope you'll join me in office hours. I love talking about staff. You cannot ask me a question I won't enjoy talking about. Um, so maybe you'll get to know me better that way and then you'll recognize me in my dining room. Well, let's go take a tour of the class. So let's take a tour of our course. Um, this is how it will look, whether you're on a tablet or a phone or a computer. You will need a computer for this class for the tests. So if you don't have a laptop or a desktop, um, please reach out to me ASAP so I can get you something from the, a loaner from the school. Um, but I'd like to point out some important things. I'm not going to click on everything, but I want to highlight some key pieces of our online course. The first thing I'd like to point out is notice this says office hours to be determined. By the time I launch the course, I will have finally decided when my office hours are, but they'll be linked here. So if it's uh, Monday, Wednesday in the morning, I want you to know that I'm guaranteed to be sitting at my computer during the hours that will be listed here. So feel free to come by anytime to chat with me, say hello, and you don't have to have a well designed question. I think sometimes students find it very intimidating to come talk to stats teachers. You can just come in and say, I read this and it didn't click. And you don't have to know exactly why it didn't click. That's my job. But I, I would like to encourage you, I have a lot of fun talking about this stuff. So um, please come talk to me. All right, so let me point out some other things. This announcements, I send a lot of announcements the first few weeks because I'm answering a lot of questions that you are all posing to me. It'll start to slow down as the weeks progress. So don't worry about that. Um, all of your course content can be found in this modules link and all of your assignments are here. Now I'm very visual so I put everything on this main landing page but there's actually multiple ways in which you can access information so it's not one way. So I want you to know that you can do whatever works best for you. And, and since I'm on that path to this calendar is quite convenient because it's a calendar view of what's due separate from the calendar I created and everything's hyperlinked so it should make it a little easier for you to find what you need. So this first box is our syllabus. I will be sending that out via email, um, but here are some just key points about how things are scored or the point values, uh, what we'll cover, oops, that jumped, policies, uh, if you're, you're gonna need a calculator, some links to resources. So definitely check these out. I will be sending you a welcome email with critical information and then I put a copy of it here. Here's another link for a way to reach me in case you forgot where I posted my office hours to begin with. This course calendar is quite intricate I, and I actually designed it so it would fit well in your phone as well. Um, but if you click on this, it lists each week and this right here, this first column, this is the topics to learn. And so if you click on these links, it'll send you right to the module with all of the content you need to learn for that week. Then this next column, these are our homeworks. Our homeworks are due at Fridays at midnight. Now you'll notice there's a few blank Fridays. That's just a freebie for you, no homework due. Then you'll notice this first one, we have two. They're both quite small. I suppose I could combine them, um, but there's two due this first week. I end up dropping three of these because I know life happens. You didn't get in there. Um, or you maybe perhaps didn't do as well as you would like on these homeworks. So I drop three of them so that we only end up counting 10. So there's 13 of those. Um, so it takes the pressure off a little bit. I have a little bit more to say about homework in a minute. And then the end of the week, we have our discussion boards and the discussion boards are for us to kind of recap and show what we've learned a little bit. Now you'll notice I said the end of the week, but this says Mondays. I wanted to make the week most optimal for you. And I wanted the test to be at the end of a week. So we have all the week to learn the material and then we have the test at the end. So I used to have my tests on Sundays, but Sundays can be hard for students because sometimes they have to go to a library to take a test or um, lots of variables kind of come into play for Sundays, making it hard. So I didn't want to make the end of the week Saturday because some of the same issues are there. So I went ahead and bumped the end of the week to 
Monday. So our week is actually Tuesday to Monday. So just kind of reset your brain a little bit for this class and realize the end of our week is on Mondays. Um, and so on these Mondays, you'll have every Monday has something due. You'll have a discussion bo uh, board post due. And then um, those weeks where you don't, you'll have an exam. So our exams are very specifically offered from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. on those Mondays. And I don't vary from that. Um, I've locked in those times. So please block those days off on your calendar. Make sure you don't have to work that day. Because if something comes up, I do need documented excuse. And you end up getting a new exam that I have to create from scratch for you. And I have to say, all my best questions are used on the original exam. So you don't really want my makeup if you can avoid it. All right, so that's kind of this calendar view, which I like. This is how I process, because I go, okay, here's the week I'm in, which is starting on a Tuesday. And then I go, all right, here's what I need to learn. And then after I've learned that, I'll need to do my homework and then eventually a discussion board post. So those are um, accessible links that work for you if the other modalities don't work for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this variable and graphs module just so you can see what happens. And so notice that it sent me right to this landing page that's in module one. I'll show you where that is in a minute. But every module is laid out in this fashion. On the left, we have the goals of the course. This would be like um, a checklist to make sure, do you understand what this means? Now, right now, we haven't learned it. So it's okay, you don't know what qualitative versus quantitative means. But by the end of this week, you should. If you don't, then go back and make sure you understand it. So this is kind of like a study guide. Then all of our lessons are in this middle, middle panel. So what I have done is um, given you a kind of an estimate for how many hours of video there are. It's not too many. It, it doesn't go over two hours in any week. So it's not too intimidating. And they're broken up into smaller chunks. Now, actually, this first chunk, I hit 22 minutes. And then I started realizing as the course was developing that 22 minutes might be a bit long. So they're, as we go throughout the course, they tend to be smaller and smaller chunks. But still, 22 minutes is the most uh, you'll get for a chunk of uh, information to learn. So what I did was I put all of these uh, videos, the, they're based off PowerPoint that I made. I turned those into a PDF that you can um, print up and write on. And I, I left key places blank so that you would be able to fill it in with the notes. So rather than just having the answer um, right there, you'll have to write in the answer. So it's kind of a, forcing you to kind of be proactive in your learning of, while watching the video. Now, you don't have to use this PDF. This is totally just a tool for you, um, but it can be helpful because the tests are open note. So anything that you can bring physically into the room with you, like uh, pieces of paper, a book, any of that can be used. Now, nothing digitally. You can't have a, a, an iPad, a cell phone, um, another computer, or another colleague. You can't do that either. But if you have printed notes, they don't have to be these notes. They can be any note. They can be any book. Stats as stats. Um, but you can use those in the test. So I tend to test on the things I teach. So if you'd like to print up these PDFs and write on them and bring them into the desk, that's perfectly fine. Then you'll notice for um, once we come down, each video gives you a time estimate and basically the goal of the video. Then I've linked it. Now you can watch it right in here in the browser if you want. Um, you can also, uh, it's linked here. So if you want to Link, you know, watch it in a bigger screen or in a different modality, maybe on your computer or your TV. These are all put together in a channel, so they would go sequentially in order. So if you find you want to watch in front of your TV, if you start running from that channel, it will run each video one right after another in order. So these are just options for you. One thing that um, my family really likes is to manipulate the playback speed. I find I'm much more riveting in two times speed um, but you know, some people like it to go faster, some people like it to go slower. Do whatever works best for you. Mess around with that and see if there's something that you like. Um, I'm a person that can't go too fast, but I know my husband says he loses his attention if it's not fast enough. So if you find that you're distracted, perhaps speed it up. I don't know. Give it a try. So when you scroll down, there's these videos and they're broken up by topic. Then at the bottom is stuff that's not needed. So at the bottom of each of these kind of middle bars will be kind of optional stuff. You don't need to watch those, but if you felt like there was something still left hanging, go ahead and check that out and see if it will help you. 
Now scrolling back up, on the very right is then all the assignments that are due for this module. So modules are kind of equivalent to weeks. So um, we have an icebreaker that's kind of to start us off in the um, beginning. So normally you don't have a discussion at the beginning of the week. I'm going to have you do a practice setup exam. So um, I do monitor tests. We'll talk about it in a minute, but you can practice that here. Then it says, here's the book reading. Here's that homework that's due on Friday. And then um, another section of book reading and that second homework. Remember, I pointed out that there were two homeworks due. So um, take a look at the, these modules and see if they make sense if, and if this is the style that works for you. I will be launching this course early before the class starts, so watch some of those videos. If my style doesn't work for you, then it may be worth knowing that now before you get kind of three weeks in, because this is kind of how the classes run. Now, I'd like to point out that because this is in a module, if you scroll down and you hit next, the next thing in the module will show up, which is our introduction homework. So that's nice if you're one of the people who likes to do the next buttons, they're all set up for you there. Since I'm here at the homework, let me go ahead and open that up and show you what it looks like. Notice it says quiz and that's just because um, Canvas didn't have a homework function. So I just, I commandeered their quiz function. Now when you open the quiz, and students will email me sometimes and say, oh, I, I didn't do, do well in the quiz. Well, these aren't quizzes, these are homework. These are just for you to practice. So you'll see all the questions at once and all of them are multiple choice. So that way, as soon as you turn it in, you can get instant feedback. And I'd like to point out if you, um, once you turn it in, please go back and look at the feedback because I give very detailed feedback based on what answer you gave. There are never haphazard answers that I put in here. So if you found you got something wrong, I'll say, I know what you did. You probably did this and you forgot to divide by that, whatever the typical mistake is. I'd like to point out this piece here. I noticed that students in the past, I've been teaching stats for about 20 years. Um, oh, I overstated, uh, 17 years. Um, I've noticed students kind of obsess over points on homework and I realized they were losing the purpose. The purpose is to practice, to challenge your brain, to exercise it and not be focused on points. So many years I came up with this system and it works really well for me. It's a pass fail system. You do the homework and you get 60% of them right, you're gonna pass the homework. So you just need to target 60%. If you get 59% of them right, then you're gonna fail the homework. If you pass the homework, you'll get full credit. They're all worth six points. So if you pass it, you get full credit. If you fail it, you get zero. Now remember, I dropped three. So if you get a zero, don't fret. It'll just count as one of your dropped three. Students tend to be able to pull out at least 10 passing homework. Canvas didn't like that I wanted to make them pass no pass. So it kept trying to grade each of the individual questions and I didn't like that. So the way I got around it was that I made each question worth zero points so it wouldn't try to grade it. And then I made this short answer question at the very top. And so Canvas thinks that this is an actual essay question that I have to score. And so it won't try to grade your homework until I've actually scored this. Now I actually don't need you to put anything in here. It's just my way of tricking Canvas. But I found that this is a nice place for students to say something to me. Hi, I had trouble with number five. Or this last chapter was really difficult. Do you have any other resources? Or I just got a puppy today. Whatever you want to let me know, if you type it in here, I will reply to you in the um, comments. Um, so if you get an assignment comment, that'll be my reply. So I actually really like this opportunity to kind of be weekly touching base with you one on one, not just on the discussion board, but we'll be talking this way. You don't have to write anything, but it's there. So that's the homework. You know, there's 13 of them. I only count 10. So if you get a zero because you missed it or you get a zero because you failed it, that's okay. We're going to drop three. Because homework is really forcing you to keep on task with me, I don't accept any late homework at all. I'll accept late other things, but not homework. I really want to keep you on task for homework. So I'm, I, I will not bend on that even if you tell me it was a really good excuse like I was giving birth right at that moment. That's a really good excuse. Um, I will say, nope, I don't accept late homework. We'll count it as one of your late or you're dropped and let's just move on from here. So that's the homework. Let me just show you how the modules look from this module view. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, thank you for reminding me, Canvas. Let's say um, I open the homework and I realize I am not ready to answer these questions. Let's say I do this one and this one, but oh, I need to review the work a little bit more. 
Notice how I answered question two and three, and it's marked up here that I answered two and three. Now I'm gonna leave this page and go to modules. And it says, are you sure? I say, okay. Homeworks, unlike my tests, but homeworks, you can come back and forth as many times as you want before you submit it. So I'm gonna come down and find the homework one. We were doing the introduction homework. So I go back to that homework and it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna resume where you left off? And I'm gonna say, you betcha. So there's no time limit. You can spend as much time as you want, as many days as you want. It saved my work. Once you submit it, which is down here, then you're done. It's mine. Um, but before you submit it, you can change your answers a billion times. You can save them, come back and forth. Sometimes I have students come and try to answer it before they learn the week's material and then come back and change their answers. Uh, whatever works best for you. But you can come and go from these homeworks as much as you want. Um, just once you submit it, it's mine. Okay. So going back to the module link. Um, this first I'm just going to close that real quick. This first module follows the pattern of all the others. So we have the module learning. This is that learning content I showed you. Here are the two homeworks, and then here's our discussion board at the end of the week. Then our next module uh, has a similar pattern. Here's our learning content, the homework, and then the discussion due at the end of the week. Learning content, homework, discussion board. Now notice these are locked, and that's because I don't want students moving ahead. If students try to move ahead, that means they haven't spent enough time on this topic. I guarantee you there could be more time spent on this topic. Um, if you went through all of my videos and you have them memorized, then go read the book and see how we overlap or don't overlap. So each module follows that same pattern. This one's a little different because we had two homeworks, but other than that, they all follow the same pattern. Now this first course uh, details module, um, feel free to come in here when you get access. It's just kind of all the information I'm going over with you now, just in module content. So they're kind of all organized that way. All right, going back home. Let's say the calendar didn't work for you or the modules didn't work for you. You can also click on lessons here and it lists out each of the topics for you to click on and get to that learning material. Again, I'm just trying to provide opportunities for you to access information in a multitude of ways. Our textbook, I do use a textbook for this class. I understand it costs money and it's because we're online and I need you to have a reliable good source. So many students really like this book. It's a very easy read for stats. I mean, you know, stats anyway, so that's going to be the easiest read. But as far as reads go, it's pretty good. Because it might take you some time to get it, I provided chapter one. And then here are some electronic resources that, that are a little bit cheaper. My only concern about these is that, remember, I'm letting it be open book, but it's not an open digital book. It's an open printed book. So if you end up with one of these, you may not be able to look through the book like someone else might during the test. So keep that in mind. Um, and then the textbook has a companion website from a previous edition, which I think is helpful because it has like quizzes and flashcards and videos and, and that kind of thing. Fun, fun stuff to play around with. Okay. We are going to be using a program called JASP. Um, it is actually required for our class to be uh, transferable to the UCs that we have a statistical program. There's a program called SPSS, which is very well used across the world, um, but it's quite expensive. And I didn't want you to have to pay for SPSS. So JASP is actually free, but it does all the stuff we're gonna need to do for this class. So I'm gonna teach you how to use this program. I'm gonna assume you know nothing and I'm gonna help you. But a lot of guides are provided in this link. The one thing I will say at this particular point is it's easier to use JASP if you can download it to your computer and run it like a program. But if you have a Chromebook and you can't, it is possible to run it um, from the web. Uh, it's just not as seamless. There's a little bit of extra steps. Um, so if you can download it to your computer, that's best, but um, we can work around it and I'll show you how when we get there. The list of homeworks that were up here are also listed here. Um, and then the list of exams are here as well as that practice one. So I do monitored exams. And so here you'll find a guide for what that entails, what you need to know. Um, and you can practice as many times what it would look like and see if it's a make or break deal for you. So um, think about that, see if that's something that, that, you know, it's just, you don't wanna be monitored, then this probably won't work out. But if you wanna practice it and see how it goes and see if it's something worth your while, then um, you've got that availability to do that there. 
our discussion boards are all listed here. We have something in assignment due at the end of the semester called a claim critique. Don't worry about it now, but it's a nice way to see if you can apply all the lessons we've learned in this class to something you would actually use. I know a lot of you aren't going to use stats moving forward. Some of you may, surprisingly, um, but this is kind of a product application. Here you can click on your grades. I provide extra credit in this class, so check out this link when you get there, and then if you have any help with Canvas. So for the most part, I think I've covered everything. Um, if you have any questions about how I run the course, um, please reach out, and I will probably email everyone answers to these kinds of questions, or I'll put them in the announcements so that you all benefit from each other's questions. So thanks for joining me on that tour. I look forward to meeting you online, and let's get started.